Gardeners talk endlessly about compost, how to build it, how to balance it, how to apply it. But there's an older, simpler method that delivers faster, more targeted results than many compost piles ever will. Long before industrial fertilizers, ancient farmers from the Middle East to North Africa to Eastern Europe relied on fermented grain brews to revitalize tired soil, restore plant vigor, and spark microbial renewal in fields that had gone dull. These brews weren't beers or spirits. They were controlled ferments made from soaked grains packed with amino acids, minerals and living microorganisms that soils respond to almost immediately. Today this practice is making a quiet comeback because it requires no specialized tools, no purchased inputs and no long decomposition cycle. When done correctly, a fermented ancient grain brew becomes a living soil tonic that outperforms compost in speed, penetration and effect on plant resilience. Compost remains essential for building structure, but if you want a direct, fast-acting biological charge, this method delivers it. Start with the understanding that fermentation unlocks nutrients compost alone can't release as quickly. When grains ferment, microbes break down complex carbohydrates and proteins into amino acids, simple sugars, organic acids, and trace minerals in forms soil microbes and plant roots can access almost immediately. Compost still must decompose, integrate into the soil, and be processed further by organisms. A fermented grain brew, by contrast, works like a microbial concentrate. It energizes the soil's living network and feeds beneficial bacteria and fungi in a way that compost tea attempts to mimic but honestly rarely achieves with such consistency. Ancient farmers noticed that fields treated with grain ferments greened up faster and held moisture longer. Modern gardeners notice the same thing. Healthier root development, stronger early growth and a visible improvement in soil scent and texture after only a few applications. Choose your grain carefully because, well, each one brings different benefits. Older civilizations used what they had, barley, millet, sorghum, einkorn, and spelt. These grains have higher mineral content than modern hybrid wheat varieties and tend to ferment steadily without collapsing into mush. Barley is still the gold standard, because it produces a balanced, mild ferment rich in enzymes. Millet creates a more fungal-leaning brew, making it excellent for perennial herbs, fruiting shrubs and woody plants. Sorghum ferments into a nutrient-dense, slightly sweeter brew with a strong microbial profile ideal for annual vegetables. A simple ratio works. One part whole grain, to three parts non-chlorinated water. Chlorine suppresses fermentation, so if your tap water is chlorinated, let it sit uncovered for 24 hours before use. For a small garden or raised bed setup, one cup of grain to three cups of water is enough to create a powerful starter. For larger beds, scale up using the same ratio. Ferment the grain long enough to activate it, but not long enough to rot it. A proper ferment takes, you know, about five to seven days, depending on temperature. Warmer weather speeds the process, while cooler temperatures slow it down a bit. The key signs that your brew is ready include a soft, tangy aroma, not sour, not rotten, and small bubbling around the grain. The water will turn, well, slightly cloudy or tan. The grains may swell as well. What you're creating is a living extract, not alcohol and not compost tea. It's essentially a controlled microbial expansion chamber where the grain feeds the microbes and the microbes in turn create compounds that feed the soil. The moment it smells alcoholic or decomposed, it has gone too far and should be discarded. A healthy brew has a clean ferment forward scent, similar to fresh sourdough starter, or you know, a mild grain wash. So, 
you'll want to apply it as a diluted soil drench for both new and established beds. The finished concentrate is, well, very strong. Generally, one part fermented brew to ten parts water works well for most gardens. For seedlings or tender herbs, it's best to dilute it even further. One part brew to fifteen parts water. Pour it directly onto the soil, not the foliage, and let the microbes work their way down into the root zone. If you're preparing a new bed, go ahead and apply the diluted brew a few days before planting. For an established garden, simply apply every two to three weeks during the active growing season. A single brew batch can actually be stretched over several applications since you only need a small amount to wake up dormant soil biology. Gardeners often notice changes within a week. The soil looks darker, the crumb structure improves, and roots respond with a bit more vigour. Herbs like basil, thyme and parsley respond especially quickly, producing more fragrant leaves and sturdier stems. Vegetable beds show deeper green coloration and more uniform growth. Boost the brew's performance by adding a second stage, the ancient soak and repeat cycle. After straining the first brew, don't throw the grains away. Traditional farmers soak the same grains two or three more times, each batch slightly weaker, but still rich in microbes and minerals. For the second soak, reduce fermentation time to three to five days. For the third, two to four days is enough. Each cycle extracts different compounds and together they create a layered biological profile that compost teas rarely match. So when you're combining all three brews, always make sure to dilute the mixture before you use it. This approach, you know, really maximizes the value of just a small amount of grain, making it honestly one of the most cost-effective soil tonics out there. You can use the leftover fermented grain as a slow-release soil amendment. Once the grains have been extracted fully, simply dig them into the top two inches of soil around heavy feeders like tomatoes, squash and peppers. They will continue breaking down slowly, offering a mild, sustained nutrient release while attracting fungal activity. This dual use, first as a ferment base, then as a soil amendment, is one reason ancient cultures valued grain ferment so highly. Nothing goes to waste. This method works because it energizes soil life instead of relying on bulk decomposition. Compost builds structure over the long term and every garden needs that foundation. But when the goal is fast recovery, boosted growth or an immediate improvement in soil vitality, this fermented ancient grain brew works faster and penetrates deeper than compost ever could. It's simple, inexpensive and time-tested by civilizations that understood soil biology long before microscopes existed. If you want more powerful, low-cost soil building methods like this, let me know. There's a whole world of forgotten gardening practices worth rediscovering.